carrying on to the second part of the series of the Cry plugin creation. Uh, my name is Colin. And yeah. uh, my name is Philip, I guess. That's right. Philip is back. And what we're going <laughs> to do is we're going to extend our plugin to have an entity and register some geometry or load geometry. Exactly, yeah. So I guess uh, we can get right into it. Yeah, sure. So what we're going to do is simply add a new source file to uh, this plugin right here. And what we'll do is we'll switch from Visual Studio and quickly go into the My Plugin source code. What we can do is simply create a new source file here called My Entity. <laughs> if we can type this correctly, My Entity. That's it. And why didn't I reverse? Let's see. There we go. Now we have the icon. Then open CMake lists and make sure that we actually load load this entity. So what we'll do is we'll copy this segment from Plugin Main. Call this entities and also called entities down here. Rename the category itself and specify which source files we want inside this category. In this case, we only want myentity.cpp, which we Double created quote. right here. Whoops, fixed. Mm -hmm. And then we have a category containing our entity. Normally, we also have to, have to add it to source, but I actually pre added this just for the convenience. I totally didn't forget that there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then if we simply open up the myentry.cpp file, we can include the standard header to get this to compile. And simply press build and build solution. And there we go. Reload all. Correct this slightly. And here we go. Right in Visual Studio, we now have myentry.cpp being compiled. And then we can get right to it to actually creating our own entity. The way we'll do this is that we'll create a new class called component and implement the component interface. What you have to keep in mind is that this actually isn't available by default in the headers that come from the common header. So we'll have to include cry entity system slash component h. Whoops, there we go. And now we have it right here. Oops. Then what we want to do is actually register this using a macro that allows us to specify a GUID and name, which allows us to then later on create and query our component at runtime. So what you have to keep in mind is this very long name, cry entity component interface and class. There are other variations of this, but for now we'll focus on this simple macro that is used when you directly inherit from iEntity component. We'll then have to select a name, uh, which we'll call... You can call, just like we have uh, done in previous ones, GeomEntity. Yeah, we'll call it GeomEntity component. And then we have to generate a GUID. So this is a globally unique identifier. Sorry, a window popped up on the other screen. As you saw, I press Tools and Create uh, GUID. Then we simply want the registry format and press Copy. What that does is copy a new GUID to your, uh, your clipboard, which is in a slightly different format from what we actually need, which you see here from the plugin. We'll modify it by removing these and simply copy them. The first one being 0x the number, and the second one being 0x, and the second number. And there we go. Then that generates some functions allowing us to query this component at runtime, which we'll explain a bit later. What we also have to do is register this class. And this is done outside the scope, always in the CPP file. Keep in mind that if you do split this up into a CPP and a header file, that the actual class itself should be in your header file. And cry register class should only be done once, aka it should be in the, uh, the CPP file. Then we simply register, see my entity component, and save. Now, theoretically speaking, we should be able to compile this if we can actually click here. Yeah, there we go. And build solution. There we go. Now we have our entity component. What's worth noting here is that there's a very big difference between an entity and an entity component. An entity is essentially a wrapper of logic that we can have in the level. Consider a brush that is a static object, whereas an entity is a dynamic object that can change. 
However, an entity will not have any special logic at any point. Any logic that we want to add in plugins or games or any game specific logic comes from entity components. So an, an entity can have a very vast amount of entity components attached to itself at runtime. This is what we're creating right here, an entity component. In the end, we will attach this to an entity in order to create a specialized entity with our own logic. So it's like a wrapper. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what we want to do then is possibly register this. Mm -hmm. And we can do that by implementing the helper interface we have here, iEntity Registrator. As you may see in plugin.cpp, we automatically go through a linked list here and register all the entities that are contained inside it. It's simply helper to quickly register everything we want. And we'll actually do that below here. So what we'll say is we call say C my entity registrator is public I entity registrator. And keep in mind that we also need to include login.h in order to get this from this file right here. And then if we see what do we need to implement for implement from I entity registrator. All we need is the register function. So we override that. And then we can do anything we want in here. So what we then have to do is simply create a static called static C my entity registrator G entity, sorry, entity registrator. This will be called at startup uh, whenever we're ready to start registering all the entities. What we'll do then is use the global register entity with default component template. See if this works. Does this work? Not quite. Okay, maybe this comes from another file. Cry entity system slash iEntity.h. Do we find this one? <laughs> Let's see which file this is in. So if we also include the entity system, cry entity system slash i entity system dot h there Ooh. we go exactly we just had to quickly hunt for where this was actually defined what this macro allows or sorry this template allows for is simply registering an entity that on spawn automatically creates a new instance of a specific component in this case we wanted to create an instance of our my entity component uh, and the entity can just be called my entity we could place this under the samples category inside the editor. So use a proper semicolon there and then compile. We have the binary ready. If we minimize Visual Studio quickly, we can copy over the binary to our actual project as we did before. Keep in mind that the cry plugin file is still mentioning the plugin and will load it and simply start sandbox here to see if we can find our entity inside the sandbox. Okay, so now we have actually started the editor and can see our entity right away right here. And if we load a level very quickly, we'll just be able to drag our entity in. And what happens is that it automatically creates an instance of the component that we had in Visual Studio. Uh, if we simply switch to see the helpers, we see our entity right here. And this entity actually has the component that we created earlier on. Then if we were to modify this to add some logic, that would apply to this entity immediately. What we'll do next is that we will take a short break and afterwards come back and load an asset onto this entity. So you mean strictly geometry? Exactly, yeah. Okay.